Okay, cool. Gotta get some music. Get some music going. And let me make sure these Facebookers can see what I'm doing. That's good. Okay, okay, okay. That's good. Okay, I'm gonna mute you, Christine. So you do you over there, and then we will do the yogs. You're muted. Okay, cool. Okie dokie. So whenever you're ready, we'll just start in a comfortable seated position. out take any little stretches before settling into your seats then feel free to take a moment to just kind of move to explore feel into your body and then as you're ready just sit nice and tall find stillness so you can rest your hands in your lap you can bring your hands to your heart one hand to your heart space one hand to your belly whatever you'd like just close your eyes. Take a moment to bring your awareness more inward. And then just in your own time, so I'm not going to cue you through each breath, but just in your own time, take about two or three big deep breaths on your own. So big, huge inhales and then exhaling out your mouth. And just notice as you take these deep breaths, kind of what happens to your body when you breathe in, when you fill up. And then what happens to your body when you release, when you let go. So physically, energetically, emotionally, how does it feel to take a great big exhale? And notice how much the breath kind of helps us ground and helps us center just brings us into this moment a little bit more. So even just a couple deep breaths sometimes can do wonders for your well-being. And then after you've taken your big deep breaths, no rush, and just seal your lips and begin to cultivate your ujjayi breath. So in and out through your nose by way of the back of your throat. So take just a moment sitting, breathing, and just feeling the rise and fall of your breath, the expansion and contraction of your breath within you. And then next time you breathe in, reach your arms to the sky. So stretch your arms up as tall as you can. And exhale, draw your hands into your heart. One more time like that. Inhale, fill up. Hold, reach. And exhale, hands to heart center. This time, inhale, arms to the sky, and then as you exhale, turn to your right and bring your left hand to the outside of your right knee, right hand back behind you. So just a gentle spinal twist. Try to sit up really tall, broad, and through the fronts of your shoulders, through your collarbones, and then gaze back over your right shoulder. Think about two more rounds. You can use your hand against your leg as a little bit of leverage and with each exhale just gently ring out. Good job. End of your next exhalation. Unwind and then switch the cross of your leg. So whichever ankle is in front, just switch it up. Exhale in your breath. Inhale, take your arms to the sky. 
and exhale this time turn to your left so right hand to the outside of your left knee left hand back behind you and then gaze over your left shoulder sit up nice and tall so rather than leaning back onto your left hand try to stay lifted I like to lift up to my left fingertips breathe down into your belly so big spacious inhales and then exhale, empty all the way out. Couple more rounds. Good job. End of your exhale, just slowly unwind. And then go ahead and bring your hands out in front of you and just crawl your hands forward as far as you can. And try to keep as much as you're able to your sit bones rooted so if your sit bones lift up that's okay but think of reaching your butt back back behind you so your low spine is nice and long soften your face and then send your breath down the length of your spine down the length of your back body Expand with your inhales and with your exhales, just soften around the pose, relax into it a little bit more. Take two more rounds, two more deep breaths. And then at the end of your next exhale, as you start to crawl your hands in, you can just transition onto your hands and your knees. So you can kind of keep your hands out in front of you and then just move to your hands and knees, tabletop position. From your tabletop, start with some cat cows. So inhale to arch, exhale to round. And you're more than welcome to stay here with these two movements, or we're gonna take it a little bit further. Bring your knees out wider than your hips. So just slightly wider than hips width distance apart. <clears throat> and now each time you inhale, come forward and let your hips drop towards the ground scorpion cobra so lift your heart big toes touch behind you keep your shoulders down and back as you exhale rock it back into a child's pose so hips to heels forehead to your mat so come back and forth through those two postures scorpion cobra and child's pose if this doesn't work for you you can stick with your cat cows or if you'd rather, you're welcome to just move in your own intuitive way. If something's calling to you or if something would feel better or more beneficial to you, you're welcome to go there instead. Take about three to five more rounds of breath, just exploring this movement wherever you're at. So feeling into your spine, into your hips, into your shoulders, starting to create more space through your front body. Starting to create more mobility through your hips, through your shoulders. And then eventually, so no rush, I'm gonna leave it up to you. But when you're ready, let's meet back in a downward facing dog. So get there in your own time, get there in your own way. And then once you're there, just take a moment to feel into it, to breathe into it, to really settle in. Good. So as you move into your down dog, check in with your hands. Make sure your hands are at least shoulder width distance apart. So for some reason, Sometimes people like to keep their hands really close. Maybe it makes them feel a little more secure, but see if you can bring your hands out nice and wide. So at least shoulder width distance apart, and that'll give your shoulders space. So rather than your shoulders moving up towards your ears, think of rolling your shoulders out away from your ears, and then just letting your heart kind of melt towards the ground. Lift your hips super high. So feel a connection to your center, navel to spine, core lock, what we call Uddiyana Bandha, and use that to keep you lifted, to keep you out of your upper body so you're not sinking into your wrists or your shoulders. If it feels good, maybe pedal out your heels, shift your weight from side to side, shake your head yes or no. 
And just feel all the space inside your body. Breathe into it. Let's take one more inhale in our down dog. And then exhale, gaze to the top of your yoga mat. Step, tiptoe, or hop forward, fold. Once you've arrived, I want you to actually bring your feet out to the width of your mat. Keep all 10 toes facing forward. And then on an inhale, bend your knees, reach your butt towards the ground, lift your heart, see if you can reach your arms straight forward. And then exhale, fingertips to the ground, sit bones to the sky, crown of your head reaches down. So go back and forth through those two movements a couple times. Bend your knees, butt reaches back and down, arms reach forward, chest lifts up. Exhale, work your fold. So think inner thighs back, wide and apart. Sit bones lift, crown of your head reaches down. Move with your breath just a few more times. So kind of warming up through your legs. Working the length in your legs, the mobility in your hips and your groin. So just taking these first few moments to warm our body up, to get energy flowing. Listen to your breath, make it spacious, make it powerful. Take one more round and then end up in your forward fold. So once you're in your forward fold, keep your feet nice and wide, mat width distance apart, all 10 toes face forward. Inhale just to a halfway lift position. So spine parallel to the ground. Keep your left hand down, reach your right arm to the sky, little twist. If you can, keep both of your legs straight, reach the crown of your head forward, reach your sit bones back. If you need to, you can bend your left knee a little bit or a lot. Take about two more rounds. Maybe wrap your right arm behind your back. Maybe grab your outer right ankle with your left hand. Just an option, you do not have to take it. Use your last exhalation to really work your twists from the inside out. End of your exhale, slowly unwind, and then switch to the other side. So start with your right fingertips on the ground, left arm to the sky. Nice and long through your spine, long through your legs. If you need to bend your right knee, that's fine. Option to wrap your left arm behind you. Maybe grab hold of your left ankle with your right hand. Use that as gentle leverage. Twist from your center, couple more rounds. Yay, Jill hopped on. Welcome, Jill. Take one more round. And then end of your exhale, unwind, ragdoll pose. So grab opposite elbows and just kind of let your upper body sway or swing or bob. Let your head be heavy. Try to keep your weight slightly forward in your feet. If you would like to walk your feet in a little bit closer now, feel free. So heel toe your feet in, hips width distance apart, or if you prefer, big toes touch. End of your next exhale, release your elbows. Inhale, spinal extension. So lift halfway and just lengthen. Exhale, fold. Root through your feet and let's rise all the way up to stand. Inhale, stretch your arms to the sky. Exhale, draw your hands to your heart center. Let's flow with our breath for just a moment. Inhale, high mountain. Exhale, take a slow swan dive down, forward fold. Halfway lift, breathe in, lengthen. Exhale, bow, fold. Root through your feet, lead with your heart. Rise to stand all the way up. Inhale, big full body stretch, reach up. And exhale, Anjali Mudra, hands to heart center. Again, just like that, high mountain, breathe in. Exhale, follow your breath down. So traction out your spine and then let it go. Forward fold. Halfway lift. Ardha Uttanasana, inhale, and exhale, release. Press into your feet, lead with your heart, take it all the way up. Inhale, stretch tall. 
and exhale, hands to heart center. Let's go through a couple rounds of sun A's today. Inhale, high mountain, reach. Exhale, slow dive. Think of it as a moving meditation. Halfway lift, inhale. And then this time, exhale, plant your hands, step your feet back, chaturanga, slowly lower down. Inhale, lift into a back bend of your choice. And exhale, down dog, take it back. Great big inhale, fill up. Lift your hips high, lengthen your spine and your side bodies. Exhale, gaze forward, step or float, forward fold. Halfway lift, breathe in. Exhale, bow, fold in. Root through your feet and take it up. Inhale, stretch your arms up, gaze up. Exhale, hands to heart. One more round just like that. So warming up our bodies, building our internal heat. Inhale, high mountain. Exhale, slow dive. Think of sticking your butt out behind you, but keep the weight forward on your feet. Let it go at the bottom. Halfway lift, inhale. Exhale, plant your hands, feet to the back of your mat. Chaturanga Dandasana, strong arms, strong belly. Inhale, heart lifts. And exhale, hips lift, take it back to your down dog. Take a great big inhale into your down dog. And then listen, exhale, just gently set your knees on the ground, tabletop position. All right, from your tabletop, we're going to pivot on our right knee so your right foot comes to the outside of your mat, left leg extends back, and then left arm to the sky. So modified side plank. Try to get all the flexion out of your hips, so press your hips forward. You don't want your butt sticking out behind you. And then reach your left arm towards the top edge or past the top edge of your mat. So lengthening through your left side body. You can stay right here or option to float your left leg up. Make your left leg strong and powerful. Reach from your left fingers all the way back to your left toes. Take one more inhale here. Stay here if you'd like, otherwise, Exhale, bend your left knee, reach back, grab hold of your foot, kick foot into hand, pull hand back into foot, and see if you can turn your heart to look up at the sky. Back muscles hug around your spine, hips press gently forward, heart is open, shoulders are open. Take two more deep breaths, your fullest expression. Good job, you guys. Very end of your exhale. Slowly release, unwind, come back to hands and knees. And then we're gonna take it back to our downward facing dog, but bring your feet out wide to the width of your yoga mat. And you might step your feet just an inch closer to your hands. So step your feet up just a teeny tiny bit. Make sure you're still in the position of down dog so your hips are still lifted, spine is still long. Now take your right hand, reach it back, grab hold of the outside of your left ankle. See if you can gaze underneath your left armpit. And then keep lifting your hips high, so imagine an invisible rope pulling up on your belly button. Each time you exhale, you can use that leverage of your hand against your leg to gently twist a little bit further. Take two more rounds, two more big deep breaths. Good work, end of your next exhale. Unwind, so regular downward facing dog. Kind of adjust your stance. Pedal it out for just a moment. Inhale, take your right leg to the sky. So take a moment, pause here, and really find length and strength from your fingertips all the way back up to your right heel or your right toes. Get your right leg as straight as possible. And then notice your left leg. Did you get lazy in your left leg? So hug in with your left inner thigh. You should be on the ball of your left foot. So everything is lifting and lengthening. Take one more inhale. Exhale, right knee to your nose. Round your spine, hollow out your belly. Stay here as you breathe in, push the ground away. Super high on your back, tiptoes. Exhale, step your right foot through and then slowly rise, crescent lunge. 
So take a moment to find stability through your legs. Front knee over front ankle, hips square. Think of spiraling your back inner thigh in and then up towards the ceiling. So you want to feel your inner thighs hugging in towards midline. They're stabilizing for you. Tone your low abdominals, lift your heart, reach through your fingertips. Take one more inhale here. And then as you exhale, bring your right hand down to your right thigh. Push your right hand down. See if you can lift your left arm even higher. And then start to reach your left fingertips over to the right. So side body stretch in your left side. Breathe into all that length. Take one more inhale. And then as you exhale, you're going to use that length to twist. So start to hinge at your hips. Bring your left elbow to the outside of your right knee or thigh. Hands to prayer. Revolve, lunge. Press your palms together. As you press your palms together, imagine you're trying to pull your belly button away from your front thigh. Broaden through the fronts of your shoulders, through your collarbones. If this feels like way too much, then you can keep your left hand on the ground inside your right foot. Right arm reaches up. So revolve, lunge, your variation. Give me two more big, huge, deep breaths. Good job. Use your exhale to twist, twist, twist. End of your exhalation. Unwind. Bring both hands to the inside of your right foot and walk your right foot out wide to the width of your yoga mat. Now bring your white right foot even wider than your yoga mat so it comes off onto the ground. And then bring your back knee gently down. If you need extra cushion for your back knee, you can fold over the side of your mat or use a blanket, sweatshirt, pillow, whatever you've got. Okay, so back knee is down. Right foot is off the right side of your mat. Spin your right toes as far as you can out to the right. So pivot your right toes 30, 45, maybe even 90 degrees out to the right. And then listen here, think of pushing your butt back towards the back of your mat. So you want to push your butt back and then lower your upper body down. So I'll turn and face forward so if you're confused on what it looks like. So my front foot, my toes are pointing out to the side and then I'm pushing my butt back as I lower my upper body down. So we're going for that nice stretch in our hips and our groin. And if you want to, you can kind of rock forward and back. Take about four or five rounds. The more you push your butt back, the more you will open up through your right hip. The more you pivot your toes out to the right, the more you will open up through your right hip. So find your edge and just breathe into it, soften around it. Maybe those little rocks forward and back. Keep them nice and gentle, very subtle. Take about two or three more rounds. You can exhale out your mouth at any time. Good job, you guys. Last big deep breath. And then end of your exhale, rise back up to your hands. Work your right foot back to midline so you're framing your right foot. Now your toes face forward. Lift your back knee off the ground. Standing split. So right foot roots, left leg lifts. Reach up through your left toes. Spread them. Lift using the strength in your center. So belly button pulls up. You can relax your neck. Let your head hang. If you want to play with a couple handstand hops, you're welcome to. If you want to play with your balance, go for it. Take about two or three more rounds. Your fullest expression, whatever that looks like for you today. If you're exploring with movement, awesome. If you're finding stillness, just feeling the movement of your breath within you, perfect. Your pose, be in it. Feel every little space inside of you. Take one more inhale. Good job. Exhale, forward fold. So set your left foot down next to right at the top of your mat. You can give your right leg a little shake out if it would feel good. 
and then feet hips width distance apart, all 10 toes face forward. We're going to do the exact same thing we did at the very beginning of class. So as you inhale, bend your knees, reach your butt back, and if you can, down towards the ground, but your heels stay down. Reach your arms forward, lift your chest. And then exhale, forward fold. So same thing, now our feet are just a little bit more narrow, a little closer together. Go back and forth. So inhale, bend your knees, arms reach forward, heart lifts. Try to keep the weight in your heels as you sit back. And then as you exhale, weight comes forward more into your toes, crown of your head towards the ground, sit bones towards the sky. You can move at your own pace, back and forth. If you can very intentionally work the length in the backs of your legs, that mobility through your hips, your knees, and your ankles. Each time you sit back, see if you can lift your heart up, roll your shoulders back and down. Take about two more rounds. And then we'll end up in our forward fold, feet hips width distance apart. Take a halfway lift from your forward fold. Keep your feet hips width distance apart this time. Left hand underneath your chest, right arm to the sky, bend your left knee a lot. So left knee bends, root down through the inner edge of your right foot, Straighten your right leg as much as you can, and imagine you're trying to pull your right hip towards the back of your mat. <sighs> Breathe down into your belly. Big, deep, ujjayi breaths. If you wanna wrap your right arm behind your back, go for it. Take just one more round. And then end of your exhale, switch to the other side. So unwind, right fingertips down, right knee bends, left arm reaches up. Root down through the inner edge of your left foot. Energetically pull your left hip back. Breathe down the length of your left leg. If you want to wrap your left arm behind you at any time, feel free. Use your exhales to twist from the inside. One more round. End of your exhale, unwind. Inhale to a regular halfway lift position. Exhale, fold. Root through your feet. Let's rise all the way up to stand. Inhale, stretch your arms up, gaze up. Exhale, hands to heart center. All right. Inhale, take your arms to the sky. And then exhale, chair pose, sit back. So weight in your heels, heart is lifted, belly is toned. So make sure your feet are hips width distance apart. And this time we're gonna twist, left hand comes down in between your feet, right arm to the sky. So twisted chair pose. You can stay here or wrap your right arm behind your back, half bind. If the full bind is in your practice, go for it. Reach your left arm up, possibly clasp your hands. If you have to really strain or be forceful to get there, then maybe just take a half bind today, no big deal. If you're in the full bind and you wanna go for Bird of Paradise, you're welcome to. We've got two more breaths. So wherever you are at, if you're holding your twisted chair, Use every single exhale to twist a little further. See if you can sit back just a little bit deeper. Weight should be in your heels. Good work. If you are in Bird of Paradise, start to find your way back down. Everybody, last exhalation, twist to your edge, and then unwind, let it go forward, fold. Grab hold of your peace fingers with your, or grab hold of your big toes with your peace fingers. So index and middle finger wrap around your big toes. Bend your knees as much as you need to to get that. And then once you have hold of your toes, take an inhale, try to extend your spine. So press back through the tops of your thighs, broaden your sit bones, reach the crown of your head forward, lengthen. Exhale, fold, bow. So sit bones towards the sky, crown of your head towards the ground. 
use your bind, your grip of your big toes as gentle leverage. Each exhalation, see if you can dive deeper, fold further. Breathe into your back body. Create space there. Exhale, draw navel to spine all the way to empty. Find your deepest fold one last round. End of your exhale, release your toes. Take one more halfway lift, spine nice and long. Breathe in. Exhale, plant your hands, step back to plank. And then pause in your plank pose. Lower to your forearms, forearm plank. So elbows under shoulders, forearms parallel, palms face down, fingers spread wide. To modify, you can interlace your fingers instead. So make sure your elbows are no wider than your shoulders. Draw your belly button in and up. Feel that connection to center. Now ever so slowly, we'll transition to dolphin. So start to crawl your toes in, lift your hips up. Imagine that invisible rope, it's pulling up on your belly button. Don't let your elbows drift apart. Keep pressing down through the belly of your forearms. Relax your neck, soften your face. Stay where you're at or take your right leg to the sky. Press up with your right foot. You've got three more rounds. Keep hugging in with your upper arms, with your elbows. Keep lifting from your center. Think of pressing your chest back towards whatever is behind you. If your right leg is lifted, make it strong and powerful. Use it to take weight out of your upper body. Take just one more big inhale, your fullest expression. End of your exhale. So let it go. Ha. And then end of your exhale. Right foot down, knees down. Give yourself a little rest. So child's embryo or even hero's pose, just a seated meditation. So just relax, just breathe, notice, feel, observe, notice where you are tightening up, where you are tensing up, are you clenching your jaw, are you clenching your fists, and can you just soften? Take about two or three more, just grounding, restorative breaths. And then we'll meet on our hands and our knees. So tabletop position when you're ready. Tabletop. Pivot on your left knee. So left foot comes to the outside of your mat like a little kickstand. Right leg reaches back and then right arm to the sky. Modified side plank. Press your hips gently forward. So get any flexion, any bend out of your hips. You don't want to stick your butt out behind you. Take your right arm forward. So imagine you're trying to reach past the top edge of your mat. Stay here or float your right foot up. Make your right leg strong like your karate kick in the air with your right leg. Stay here or final option, bend your right knee, reach back, grab hold. Kick foot into hand, pull hand back into foot. So find that line of tension. Spread your toes as you hold your foot in your hand. See if you can take your gaze up and let your heart follow. So let your heart open, breathe down into your belly. Breathe down into the front of your right hip. Take two more rounds, your fullest expression, wherever you are at. Soften around the pose. Good job, you guys. End of your second exhale. Slowly release, unwind. Back to hands and knees. And then back to downward facing dog. Bring your feet out to the width of your mat. If you want, you can walk your feet in just a little tiny bit, not more than an inch. Left hand reaches back this time to grab the outside of your right ankle. If you can't grab your ankle, back of your calf or back of your knee is fine, just as low as you can go. And then keep pressing firmly through your right hand, right shoulder really strong. Each time you exhale, use your core, so from your center, 
twist, gaze underneath your right armpit. Keep lifting your hips high. See if you can press your heels perhaps just a little bit closer to the ground. Couple more rounds. Get everything you can out of it. So with each exhale, ring out, detox from the inside. Nice work, you guys. After you've taken a couple more breaths, I'll just kind of leave it up to you. We'll come back into a regular downward facing dog. So you can readjust your stance. Take a moment, just kind of walk it out. If you want to move through a regular vinyasa, go for it. Fire up your ujjayi breath. Inhale, left leg to the sky. Three-legged dog. Hips square, press up through your left foot, press forward and down through your hands, lift from your center. So you should be strong in your right leg, the one that's on the ground, it should feel strong. You should be lifted onto the ball of your foot. So if you bent your right knee, it should feel like you could pounce forward, you could leap forward at any moment. There's strength in that right leg. See if you can make your left leg straighter, stronger, more powerful as it floats in space. One more inhale. Exhale, left knee to nose. Keep your hips as high as you can. Stay here as you breathe in. Puff up into your back body. Super high on the ball of your back foot, your back tiptoes. And then exhale, step your left foot forward. Rise up to your crescent lunge in your own time. So you can take a moment. Find stability in your legs. Make sure your hips are square. Inner thighs hug in. Belly is gently toned, those lowest, deepest abdominals. Heart is lifted, side bodies are long. Soften your face, breathe. All right, just one more inhale and crescent. And then exhale. Bring your left hand down to your left thigh. Press your left hand down. See if you can reach your right fingertips even higher. And then start to reach your right fingertips over to the left. So side body stretch. Feel all of that length from your right fingertips down to the front of your right hip. Breathe into that length. One more inhale. Now use that length to twist. So hinge at your hips as you exhale. Bring your right elbow to the outside of your left knee or thigh, hands to prayer. Push your palms together, broaden through the front of your shoulders. Imagine you're trying to pull your belly button away from your front thigh. Squeeze through your inner thighs, keep your back leg powerful and strong. If this feels like way too much, right hand can stay on the inside of your left foot and then left arm reaches up. So your fullest expression of your revolve lunge. Give me two more deep breaths. Twist from your center, each exhale. From the inside. Good, end of your second exhalation. So as far as you can go, ring out, and then slowly unwind. Bring your hands to the inside of your left foot. Walk your left foot all the way out to the width of your mat and then keep walking it out so it comes off your mat. Back knee gently to the ground. If you need extra cushion, grab some or fold over the side of your mat. All right, so your front toes, those left toes, pivot them out to the left as far as you can. So spin your left toes out to the left and then think of pushing your butt back as you lower down to your forearms. If you can't come down to your forearms, just walk your hands forward, maybe start to bend your elbows a little bit. So heart gets closer to the ground. And if it feels good, start to rock a little bit forward and back. So letting your hips come forward a little bit and then pushing them back. And you can kind of find that sweet spot. So where does it feel like you're getting the most benefit? And then once you find it, maybe you just stay there, breathe there. Take about four more rounds. Exhale out your mouth at any time. A 
let your heart melt closer to the ground with each exhale. Send your breath down into your hips, especially your left hip. Allow it to open. Take one more great big huge breath. And then rise up to your hands. Walk your left foot back to midline so you're framing it. Lift your back knee off the ground. And then we'll take our standing splits. So left foot roots, right leg floats up. Your variation, wherever you want to take it, just make sure there's energy running all the way up into your right tiptoes. You can play with handstand hops. You can play with balance. You can stay right where you're at and work your fold with your breath. Or I should say, work your standing splits with your breath. But all it really is is a one-legged forward fold. So focus on that if you're holding the pose. You guys are doing awesome. Two more rounds. Stick with me. Find as much length, as much space as you can. Breathe into it. One more inhale. And then exhale, forward fold. Set your right foot down next to left. All right, if you need a little shake out for your left leg, go for it. And then this time, bring your big toes together so they touch, little gap in between your heels. We're gonna do the same thing we've been doing. So bending our knees, coming into a squat position, and then working into our fold. We're doing it with our toes together. So if you're like me, it's gonna be a lot harder to keep your heels on the ground. So on an inhale, try to keep your heels down as you bend your knees, reach your arms forward. And then as you exhale, fingertips come down, hips lift up, crown of your head towards the earth. Go back and forth with your breath. So inhale, bend your knees, think butt towards the ground, weight in your heels, heart lifts, arms reach forward. Exhale, bow. Go at your own time and pace. And if this is absolutely not working for you, then go back to what we did last time, feet hips width distance apart. Let's take about two more rounds. Work it with your breath. Good work. And then this time, you guys, end up in what I call or what is called <laughs> a toe stand. So bend your knees and then this time let your heels lift. Bring your hips to your heels, hug your heels in and try to direct your knees straight forward. Squeeze your inner thighs. See if you can lift your hands up to your heart center. So that action of hugging in, squeezing your inner thighs, hugging your heels in, that's what's gonna help stabilize here. That's what's gonna help you balance. Feel all those little tiny muscles in your feet, in your ankles, your calves, your shins working to help you balance. Keep breathing. Stay soft through your face. Two more rounds. Nice work, you guys. End of your next exhale. Fingertips down. Lift your hips up. Bring your feet hips with distance apart now. On an inhale, halfway lift. And exhale, release. Root through your feet, take it all the way up to stand. Inhale, stretch your arms up, gaze up, open up. Exhale, hands to heart. All right, inhale, high mountain, reach. And then exhale, regular chair pose, weight in your heels, reach your butt back. This time we'll twist with our right hand down in between our feet, left arm to the sky. So your hand can be in between your feet or slightly out in front of your feet, whatever feels best to you. You're welcome to use a block under your right hand or if you don't have a block at home, a book or a water bottle. Find that twist from your center. So spine long, sit bones reach back, crown of your head reaches forward. Stay here or maybe wrap your left arm behind you. Stay here if the full bind is in your practice. 
feel free, go for it. If you want to work towards Bird of Paradise, you're more than welcome to play. About two or three more rounds wherever you're at. If you're with me and you're just holding in your twisted chair, make sure the weight is in your heels. So see if you can pick up your toes, spread them. Maybe bend your knees more, sit a little deeper. And then each exhale, can you feel that twist coming from your center? Ring out, detox, get all those detoxing benefits. Nice work. If you are playing with your bird of paradise, slowly find your way back. And then everybody, end of your next exhale, take it all the way to empty and unwind forward fold. This time, palms face up, step onto the palms of your hands for gorilla pose. So bend your knees as much as you need to to get there. Try to get so that you can the tips of your toes can touch the little creases in your wrists. And then once you are there, see if you can transfer a little more weight forward so you're not rocking back into your heels. Use your core strength to help you balance. So as long as you're engaging your core, you won't fall over. Lift your sit bones high, crown of your head towards the ground, breathe into your back body. Exhale all the way to emptiness every single time. So think of this as an active forward fold. Work it with your breath. Couple more rounds. Inner thighs back wide and apart. Sit bones nice and broad. Low back nice and long. Very end of your next exhale. So dive as deep as you can. Then release your hands. Halfway lift. Breathe in. Realign. Exhale. Plant your hands. Step back to plank. Pause in your plank. Lower down to your forearms. So take a moment. Find your strength here. Elbows underneath your shoulders. Press down through your forearms. Spread your fingers. And especially press into thumbs and index. Now... From your center, transition into dolphin pose. So start to crawl your toes forward and lift your sit bones high. Don't let your elbows drift apart. Keep pressing down firmly through the belly of both forearms. And imagine you're trying to press your heart back behind you. Stay where you're at or left leg reaches back and up. Use that left leg to take weight out of your upper body. Soften your face. Give me about three more breaths. Keep pressing down through your forearms. Keep hugging in with your inner arms. Keep pressing your chest back. Lift from your center. Breathe bigger and deeper. Use your breath to support you. Now here's the hardest part. Soften around the pose. Relax your face. Unclench your jaw. One last huge inhale. If you want, exhale out your mouth. Bring your left foot down, bring your knees down, child's pose, embryo pose, or hero's pose, seated meditation. Good job, you guys. Just noticing, feeling, and observing your own body. Listening to your own breath. In your next couple of rounds, we will meet back in Downward Facing Dog. Great big ujjayi breaths, fire it up. Next time you breathe in, right leg to the sky. Exhale, open your right hip, so bend your right knee, squeeze your outer right butt cheek. Try not to sink into your left wrist, your left shoulder, or your left hip. So left side of your body stays aligned, belly button lifts up, stack your right hip on top of left, flex your right toes. Take one more big inhale. 
Exhale, right knee, left elbow, little twist. Inhale, three-legged dog, take it up. Exhale, right knee, right elbow, or aim higher, go for your armpit. Inhale, three-legged dog. Now, last one, exhale, knee to your nose, scoop out your belly, softly step your right foot forward, bring your back knee ever so gently down. Again, if you need that extra cushion, do whatever you gotta do, fold over the side of your mat, grab a blanket, a sweatshirt, a pillow. This time we're going for our half splits. So, you can either tuck your back toes under and bring your hips back to your left heel, that will be a half screaming toe pose and then half splits. Or you can walk your front foot forward, keep your hips lined up over your back knee. Everybody flex your front toes, those right toes. Press down through the back of your right heel. And energetically, imagine you're trying to drag your right heel back towards your body. You can stay a little more upright, maybe blocks, books, water bottles underneath your hands, or think of hinging at your hips. Really think of pulling your right butt cheek back like you're trying to stick your butt out behind you and then work with folding forward. Imagine you're trying to reach your heart past your front knee. Keep your right toes flexed. You can stay where you're at or pivot your right toes out to the right. So spin your entire right leg kind of out to the right. So it's an outer rotation, external rotation. And then option to bring both of your hands over to the right side of your right leg. Think of pulling your right hip back, back, back. Squeeze your inner thighs. Keep your right toes flexed. Breathe. So it's a slightly different variation of your half splits. We're targeting our IT band a little bit more. Take about three more rounds here. See if you can engage through the front of your right thigh as you stretch the back of your thigh, your hamstring. Good work. One last round wherever you're at. Maybe fold a little bit further. Heart reaches past your front knee. And then lift back up. Come back into a lunge position, however you need to get there. Frame your front foot. Tuck your back toes. Lift your back knee. Now listen. Three-legged down dog. Right leg to the sky. Open your right hip. Bend your right knee. Stay here or flip your dog. Bring your right toes down behind you. Reach your right arm forward. Lift through your heart, lift through your hips. Breathe down into your belly. Make it feel good one more round. And then end of your exhale, everybody, regular downward facing dog. Just walk it out. If you would like to take a vinyasa, please feel free. If you want to stay where you're at, just breathe, walk it out a little bit more, go for it. Up to you. All right, my friends, reconnect to your breath. You've just got a little bit longer, so stick with me. Inhale your left leg high. Exhale, peel your left hip open, bend your left knee, flex your toes, squeeze your outer left butt cheek. Try to stay strong through your right side. So right inner thigh hugs in, belly button lifts up. See if you can lift your left knee higher. Open through your left hip, allow it to open. One more in breath. Exhale, left knee, right elbow. Inhale, three-legged dog. Exhale, left to left, as high as you can get on your left arm. Inhale, three-legged dog. And last one, knee to your nose, scoop out your belly, softly step your left foot forward. Even more softly, bring your back knee down. Same thing we just did on the other side, your half splits. So your choice, back toes tucked, 
Hips come back to rest on your heels, so it's a half screaming toe, half, half splits. Or your front foot can come a little further forward. Keep your hips stacked over your back knee. Everybody, as you straighten your front leg, flex your left toes. Press down through the back of your heel. And then, so if you are, if it feels like you're kind of pushing your left heel forward, you're not getting the stretch that you, that we're trying to get. So think of pulling your left heel back towards the back of your mat, towards your body. Like you're trying to really stick your left butt cheek out behind you. You can stay as upright as you need to, hands on blocks, books, water bottles, anything you've got at home that will work, or hands on the ground. Really think of sticking your left butt cheek out as you reach your heart forward, like you're trying to reach your heart past your front knee. Left toes flexed and active, even your baby toe, your pinky toe. Perfect place to stay or pivot your left toes now out to the left. So externally rotate your left leg. Your whole leg spins out and open. So now my left knee is even pointing out to the left. Hands over to the left side of your left leg. Pull your left hip back even more. Squeeze your inner thighs. Reach forward through your heart. <sighs> Breathe. Try to engage through the front of your left quad. So if I feel my left quad right now, it feels like it's engaging. It doesn't feel just loosey-goosey. There's muscles there. They're working. So I want to work the muscles in the front of my leg as I stretch the muscles in the back of my leg. Wherever you're at, about three or four more breaths. Keep flexing through your left toes, pulling back through your left hip. Breathe deeply. Soften with your exhales. Good job, my friends. Soften your face, unclench your jaw. One last huge deep breath, dive a little deeper. And then end of your exhale, let's come back to a low lunge position. So however you need to get there, frame your front foot, lift your back knee, three-legged dog. So take your left leg all the way back and up. Woo, that feels good. Open your left hip, bend your left knee, stay here or option to flip. Left toes come down behind you. Left arm reaches forward. Open your heart. Press your hips up. Breathe down into your belly. If you're with me in the back bend, one last round. Huge breath. And then everybody regular down dog and just walk it out. You can keep walking it out or option to take a vinyasa. Come forward and lower down. All right, everybody in your down dog, take one last round, lots of length. Breathe into all the space you created. And then end of your exhale, just gently set your knees on the ground. Find your way into a seat. Okie dokie. So we're gonna take a seated hip opener today with a hamstring stretch. So. Left leg will stay extended forward. Bring your outer right ankle to the top of your left thigh. So figure four with your legs. Left leg extended, outer right ankle on top of your left thigh. Flex both of your feet. Start just sitting up tall. So if it already feels like you're going to roll backwards, if this is kind of how you look, then sit up on top of something, a couple blankets or a bolster. Everybody, try to adjust so you feel like you're sticking your butt out behind you. So you're not tucking your tailbone, but is sticking out behind you, chest is lifting. If this feels like enough, just bring your hands down by your sides or a little bit behind you. I like to lift up to my fingertips. This is your pose. This is where you stay. If you want to take it a step further, arms reach up. Think of leading with your heart. Exhale, hinge at your hips. Reach, 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 reach forward, and then let it go. Hands can come down to grab wherever they can reach. 
Think of reaching your heart past your left knee. Neck can relax, face can be soft. If you are like, this is not the variation I wanna to take today, then you can take your own variation. That's the beauty of your own practice. Do what works best for you. I'm gonna give you about four or five more rounds here. If you would like to add on, and this is just an option, don't feel like you have to take it. You can add a little twist. So right elbow to the sole of your right foot and then hands to prayer. If you're like, oh, that just feels awkward, uncomfortable, it's one more thing for me to worry about, let it go. If you'd rather just take double pigeon fire log and maybe try that twist in that pose, you're welcome to. So your pose, your expression of it, and then just breathe. Find the variation that will best serve you in your body this morning. Give it about two or three more rounds. If you want to work that twist, but it's just a little too much to bring your elbow to the sole of your foot or your tricep to the sole of your foot, maybe you can grab hold of the outside of your left calf and just work a gentle twist. So starting to twist your upper body to the left. Make sure your left toes are pointing straight up and both feet are flexed and active. Take one last deep breath. Good work. End of your exhale. You can either roll or reverse swan dive. Come all the way up. Extend your right leg out in front of you. So both legs out in front of you. Give them a nice little shake out. And then bend your knees, feet on the ground, bring your feet mat width distance apart, and just take a few rounds of windshield wiper side to side with your knees. And you can let your sit bones, so I was talking to one of my students and they're like, oh, I thought I had to keep my butt on the ground the whole time. No, as your knees fall to the right, your left butt cheek can lift. As your knees fall to the left, your right butt cheek can lift. So just work it in whatever way feels most beneficial to you. Feel that rotation through your hips, all the way up into your low back. Finish the round you are on, and then let's set ourselves up for our hip opener, our hamstring stretch on the other side. So this time, right leg extended, outer left ankle, top of your right thigh. Flex both feet, sit up nice and tall, sit on top of something if you need to. Hands behind you or by your sides to find length in your spine. If this is really hard to sit up tall, this is your pose. This is where you stay. Otherwise, arms reach up. Lift your heart. Think of sticking your butt out behind you as you exhale. Hinge at your hips. Reach your heart forward, 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 and then let go. Hands can grab wherever they can reach. Keep trying to lengthen through your low spine so heart is trying to reach past your right knee. Soften your face, relax your neck, and breathe. If you'd like, you can play with that twist. So maybe left elbow to the sole of your left foot, or maybe your left hand just grabs the outside of your right calf or ankle and use that as gentle leverage to twist your upper body to the right. Only if that feels beneficial to you. So for me, it takes me deeper into the stretch in my hip, and it still allows me to get that nice hamstring stretch. So it totally depends on what you feel in your body. Find your expression and then be there fully. Send your breath into all the little spaces. Work the pose with each breath. So each time you inhale, create space. Each time you exhale, just settle in, melt into that space. Take about four more full body breaths. You guys are almost there. Stick with me. Find more power in your breath and use it. Awesome job. Last couple of rounds. Your choice. You can either roll or reverse swan dive all the way back up. 
and then once you are sitting back up uncross your legs so both legs out in front of you give them a nice little shake out this time come all the way down onto your back and once you're on your back you're gonna take those windshield wipers with your knees so feet again mat width distance apart tee out your arms or cactus your arms and just let your knees fall from side to side at your own time and pace breathing down into your hips into your pelvis into your low back next time your knees fall to the right let them stay there option to bring the outer edge of your right foot to the outside of your left knee or thigh and apply a little bit of gentle pressure a little bit of gentle leverage think of working your left knee forward and down and then if you're like me and your left ribs lift way up imagine you're trying to press the back of your left ribs down they probably won't stay there but at least create that action And then in your next couple of rounds, just switch to the other side, no hurry. So eventually knees fall to the left. Option to bring the outer edge of your left foot to the outside of your right knee. Encourage your right knee forward and down, back of your right ribs, work towards the ground. So even if they don't touch, you're creating the action. So. For me, it just automatically happens that my belly wants to lift, my ribs want to lift, so I'm toning my belly, pressing down through the back of my right ribs. They're not touching the ground, but I'm still having that intention, creating that action. That's all you need. Big deep breaths. And then I shall leave it up to you when you feel just about even on both sides. Bring your knees back to center and find a happy baby posture. And in your happy baby, it may feel really good to rock side to side. It might feel nice to bring your feet together. Pull your feet in towards your body. Press your knees away, kind of giving your low back some traction. You can straighten one leg in your happy baby, then the other, maybe even both at the same time, like a wide-legged forward fold, but you're lying down. And then if there are any finishing poses you want to take, so maybe one final inversion, maybe one more heart opener, hip opener, so anything else that's calling to you, Anything that will help you create your, or complete your practice for you. And take a moment to just move through those postures. Move through those stretches. And finish your practice for you. guys as you settle into your final relaxation I will read you just the shortest little quote it's by J. Krishnamurti and he just says in the gap between subject and object 
lies the entire misery of humankind. So at first when I read that, I was like, oh, that's so depressing. But the more I thought about it, it's really just saying, it's really just explaining what we all already know. It's that space between where we get to choose how we respond rather than reacting. So the thing is, as humans, it's our natural inclination to just react, to just take what happens to us and react in the moment. But this practice, our yoga practice, teaches us between or in that space to take a moment to reconnect with our deeper selves, to find our center, and then we can choose how we want to respond. We can choose from a place of love, from a place of presence, how we want to proceed. So what happens in our life is not always our choice. Most of the time it's not in our control, but how we respond that is where we find our freedom. And it's either our freedom that comes or our misery <laughs> that kind of keeps building up if we keep reacting. So it is your choice. And that's what we're practicing here on our mat every single time we step onto it. We're learning how to sit with uncomfortableness, discomfort. <laughs> we're learning how to sit with intense emotions we're learning how to breathe into sensation. We're learning how to respond rather than react. So that is where you will find your freedom is in that space between subject and object, stimulus and response. Just let yourself rest for these last few moments. Let your breath become effortless. And think of these last few moments as the space between. Your time to connect with you, to come back to your center, to connect with a deeper part of who you are. So everything is just passing through Everything is impermanent. You are steady. Feel into that. And this is where I will leave you guys. Stay as long as you'd like. Just observing. Just exploring this space. Being in it. Not needing the answers now. Not needing to know. Just simply being with what is possibility and even uncertainty, allowing it all. Thank you guys so much for joining me, letting me guide you. I'm honored to be able to guide you and I'm so grateful that you show up in this online space, which I know is not always the easiest thing to just log on and turn on your computer. So thank you. I love you. Have the best rest of your day. Namaste.